Hello people, welcome back. This question is from gate 2004 exam. This one is for four marks. We have two parts of this question, two marks for each part. Let me first read the statement, then I'll explain both the parts. They are saying, consider three IP networks A, B and C. Host H A in network A sends messages each containing 180 bytes of application data to host H C in network C. The TCP layer prefixes 20 byte header to the message. This passes through an intermediate network B. The maximum packet size including 20 bytes of IP header in each network is 1000 bytes for network A, 100 bytes for network B and 1000 bytes for network C. So have a look here. They are saying the maximum packet size including 20 byte IP header is 1000 bytes for network A. So largest packet possible is of 1000 bytes including 20 bytes of header. That means maximum data can be 980 bytes. Okay. Here the maximum data at network layer that is possible will be 100 minus 20. That means 80 bytes. Okay. Here again it will be 980 bytes because from this maximum limit we are subtracting the 20 bytes of header. Okay, so maximum data will be this much. Now the next lines of question read Network A and B are connected through a 1 Mbps link. So this link is 1 Mbps and link between network B and C is 512 Kbps. Assume that the packets are correctly delivered. How many bytes including headers are delivered to IP layer at destination for one application message in the best case? Consider only data packets. Okay. So they are saying if some sender from this network wants to send a message to someone in this network and a message is of 180 bytes. How many bytes will be delivered here at IP layer? Okay. So the message is 180 bytes at application layer. These 180 bytes will be given to transport layer. So at transport layer, a 20 byte header will be added. Okay. So this is the header of transport layer. This message, these 200 bytes will now be given to the network layer. Network layer will add its own header. Okay, so these are 200 data bytes plus 20 byte header for the network layer. This datagram will then be given to data link layer. Okay, data link layer will add its headers and trailers and just send the message here. Okay, there will be some router that connects this network to this network. When this router will receive this message, the router's data link layer will remove those headers and trailers. Okay. And this datagram will be extracted. This datagram will be given to this router's network layer. Okay. Now this network layer has got 200 bytes of data along with a 20 byte header. Okay. This router will see that in this network, a IP packet can contain maximum 80 bytes of data, but this incoming packet is of 200 bytes. Okay. So this packet needs to be fragmented. Uh, this router will first remove the header. Okay. This header is separated like this. It will just be removed. It will not be deleted because this header is still needed for fragmentation. Okay. Now we will create smaller fragments of 80 bytes or less. So first fragment is created. This fragment will be of 80 bytes. Okay. Now see, I have told you that fragment size, the data present in a fragment must be multiple of 8. 80 is obviously a multiple of 8. So this is allowed. Why it must be a multiple of 8? Because 
द स्केलिंग फैक्टर इन फ्रेगमेंट ऑफ सेट फील्ड इज एट सो दैट्स द रीजन वी टेक मल्टीपल ऑफ एट ओके ऑल द फ्रेगमेंट मस्ट बी अ मल्टीपल ऑफ एट एक्सेप्ट फॉर द लास्ट फ्रेगमेंट एनी वेज सो नाउ फ्रॉम दीज रिमेनिंग बाइट्स आई हैव क्रिएटेड वन मोर फ्रेगमेंट ऑफ एटी बाइट्स ओके Eighty plus eighty, one sixty. That means forty bytes are still left. From those forty bytes, let us create the last fragment. This one, okay. This one and this one, the first fragment and second fragment, they have to be a multiple of eight. Both of these are multiple of eight, and we need not care for the last fragment. Okay. Now have a look. See, this router will just copy this header as it is for all of the three fragments. Okay, like this. So twenty byte header here, twenty byte header here, and twenty byte header here. Okay. Most of the things will be copied as it is, except for a few fields that are related to fragmentation, like the fragment offset. Okay. Now, in question, they were asking how many bytes will be received here. See, now these new IP packets that are created, they can happily go across this network. Okay, because the data is within the limit. Eighty, so eighty is allowed. This one is allowed. And forty is anyways way less than eighty. Okay, this one is also allowed. Now, this all of these three fragments they reach here. Here the limit is of nine eighty bytes. Okay, so they can happily go in this network and reach the receiver. Question was how many bytes will the receiver get, including the headers? So this is hundred. This one is hundred, and this is sixty. So total is two sixty. That means. receiver will get 260 bytes of data at network layer this is what they were asking okay so this is the answer for a part of this question now i am going to read the next part and then i'll explain its solution so next part says what is the rate at which application data is transferred to host hc ignore errors acknowledgments and other overheads okay so ignore errors means there is no error in this communication next thing is ignore acknowledgments this means that we need not consider any delays caused by acknowledgment packets okay simply ignore the acknowledgment packets third thing is and other overheads so now some of you might get confused they are saying to ignore overheads so some of you might think that these overheads can be ignored no they are not talking about these overheads they mentioned ignore other overheads by saying other overheads they mean the overheads caused by this router okay fragmentation is done and so on so no time is wasted in fragmentation no processing delay is caused at routers okay so that is what they mean this overhead has to be considered so these 60 bytes and these 20 bytes okay this will surely be considered okay now question was what is the data rate at which this communication is taking place for finding data rate first of all we need bandwidth so bandwidth from here to here is 1 mbps and this bandwidth is half mbps okay which one is to be considered it will be this bandwidth because we always considered the bottleneck bandwidth or lowest bandwidth so lowest on this path is 512 kbps see listen carefully see how can i say that this bandwidth will be considered and this one can be ignored it is because of the fact the sender is sending bits continuously okay bits or packets first bit will reach here at rate of 1 mb per second okay and this will exit at rate of half mb per second that means over time bits will start accumulating here bits or packets they will accumulate on this network there will be a lot of backlog with this network b okay 
when the first bit arrived here after that you can say a pipeline will be created okay so from point of view of this network what will be happening these bits are being received at 512 kb per second this network does not care what is happening beyond this point okay so after getting the first bit a pipeline will be created and effectively data is received at 512 kb per second only okay so we don't care what is this bandwidth or what is the speed once pipeline is filled this is the effective rate of communication okay now let us find what is the data rate see we are sending 260 bytes at 512 kb per second okay i hope this is clear that this bandwidth will be ignored so we are sending at a rate of 512 kb per second that means 512 into 1000 k is replaced by 1000 bits per second bits in 1 second okay this much data is sent in 1 second 1 bit will be sent in how much time it will be 1 upon 512 into 1000 seconds okay and how much data are we actually sending it is 260 bytes which is also equal to 260 into 8 bits okay so for this much data how much time will be taken at this rate okay this bandwidth is ignored effectively we are communicating at 512 bits per second so this much data is going to take these many seconds okay now they were asking effective data rate at which application layer communicates see what is the rate at which application data is transferred to host hc this was the question now for sending a message of 180 bytes we actually transferred 260 bytes okay 260 bytes were sent in this much time but actually the real data that got communicated is 180 bytes only see these headers these 60 bytes will be removed at the network layer and these 20 bytes will be removed at the transport layer again these 180 bytes will be given to the application layer only that means in this much time by sending this much data actually useful data sent is only 180 bytes okay so 180 bytes have taken this much time if you see from application layer point of view we want to find the data rate at which application layer is communicating okay these are all the overheads for application layer actually only this much data is going in this much time so from here you can find the data rate okay i am raising these things so 180 bytes took this much time we need to find out how much data can be sent in one second so in one second you can send 180 bytes bytes can be converted into bits by multiplying with 8 okay and this will be taken in numerator so into 512 and 1000 is written as k okay divided by 260 upon 8 sorry 260 into 8 so 8 and 8 can be cancelled and i'll let you know what is the answer using a calculator okay so 180 into 512 divided by 260 this is 354.46153 354.46153 k bits in 1 second okay so per second 
Why is the unit bits? Because by multiplying with 8, we have converted from bytes to bits. See, 180 was bytes. Application layer is sending 180 bytes. I have multiplied it with 8. So unit here is k small b. Okay. So you can have a look. This is the answer to b part of the question. Answer to a part was 260. Yeah. So total data was 260 that is sent. I hope you have understood the question and I hope you have a good day. Thank you very much for watching this video.